In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a Google Form. I've already gone ahead and logged into my Google Drive account. I'm going to go to New and Google Form. If you do not see Google Form listed, go to More and select it from there. The first thing you'll want to do is go ahead and give your form a title. You can click here where it says Untitled Form to give your form a name. Notice that when you change the name of the form here, it also updates the form title down here. Let's look at the top of the form and take a look at the form settings. The first setting says require Norfolk Public Schools login to view this form. If you're a Google Apps for Education district, it will say your domain here. And what this means, if you have this option checked, in order to see the form, students, will ha students and teachers will have to be logged in. The next option says automatically collect respondents Norfolk Public Schools username. If you have this option collected, or selected when you when you students and teachers fill out the form it will automatically collect their username which is their email address this can be a great option when you're using the form with students and you want to quickly and easily collect their usernames the next option is good for long forms. If you have a form that stretches over several pages, you can actually show a progress bar at the bottom of the form page to give the respondents an idea of where they are as far as completing the form. The next option says only allow one response per person. If you check this option, that means only one response per Google account will be recorded. So again, you have to have a Google account in order for this option to work but when you check it, only one response per Google account will be recorded. And the last option you have is to shuffle the question order. If you check this, the question order within each page will shuffle randomly. So each student would have a different order to their questions on their Google form. That's a great option. Now, if you plan to use this form with people outside your domain, you will want to be sure that the first two options are not checked. Remember that these two options require that they have an npsne.org Google account in order to see the form and to collect their usernames. If you're working with people outside of your district, make sure you have those options unchecked. As we scroll down to the form, again we will see the title of the form as we entered here. The form description is optional and I like to use this if I think people are going to need help filling out my form. I like to put some help text in there. If you don't put anything, it doesn't display. Then you will see your first question on your form. The form starts off with one multiple choice question. There are actually 11 different question types that you can ask on a Google form. And you can choose that right here in question type. You'll see some of the question types listed here. Your form will always start off with a multiple choice question, but you can change that question type quickly and easily. You have a place for your question title. This is where you would put the question. Help text again is optional, but if you think someone is going to need help understanding the question, you can explain it a little more here in the help text. With multiple choice, you can give your um, users options for the correct answer. You can click to add another option. You can even give them an option to put in their own answer choice should you choose. You can remove answer choices by clicking the X at the end of the line. Your questions will have advanced settings and depending on the question type, the settings, the advanced settings that you have access to will change. So on a multiple choice question, notice that you can shuffle the option order. So here, these options that you put here will be shuffled for each user. Great for a quiz in a classroom so that students are not looking off of each other's screens uh, to copy the answer. So you can go ahead and turn that option on. Required question means that the, they will have to answer this question before they will be allowed to submit the form. So that's just a good check if you want to be sure that students are answering all of the questions. And you can go ahead and click Done. You'll notice here that the question, this is what the question will look like on the form. It's a required question because we have the little asterisk right there. If we wanted to make changes to this question, if we hover over the question, we can edit. That will bring up the editor again. We can duplicate this question, which will give us this exact same question. And we can also delete this question by hitting the trash can. Again, when you're done, you will click Done. To add another question to your form, you can click Add Item or if you want to change the question type, you'll click the arrow next to add item. And here we can choose 
from uh, several different question types um, and layouts on our form. So if I want this next question to be a paragraph text, I can select paragraph text here, put in my question. This is where the students would be able to answer the question. Again, we can look at advanced settings because we have a different question type selected. We are given some data validation choices. Uh, this can be helpful, for example, if you were not using the option to collect the usernames and you wanted them to input their username, you could turn on the data validation and um, specify that they're getting an email address. We're going to uncheck that. We can make that a required question and we can click done. Again, if you want to edit an existing question, hover your cursor over the question and click the pencil to go back into the edit question mode. When you're done adding questions to your forms, you'll see the confirmation page at the bottom of the form. You can leave a, com a message that will sh display once the user has submitted the form, and then you have some options down here at the bottom. Now, notice that show link to submit another response is not available, and the reason why that's not available is because at the top on our form settings, we selected only allow one response per person. So we don't even have that option because we've chosen that in the form settings settings. Publish and show a link show a public link to form results. That means they'll submit the form and then they will get a link so that they can see how other people answered the questions on the form. And then uh, lastly is allow responders to edit responses after submitting. So if that option is checked, they would be able to change their answers after they have submitted a form. Once we're done with the form questions, we need to send the form and we can either click the blue button in the upper right hand corner or we can click the blue button at the bottom of the confirmation page to send the form. You have some different options here. If you want to copy the link to the form, you would click in this box and do control C to copy the link to the form. You could send that link in an email, you could post it on a website or on your board and they would enter that um, address in order to access the form. You can also embed the form in a blog or a website. If you click embed, you're given the embed code, the HTML code that you can use to embed into a um, blog or a website. And finally, you can send the form via email. So you can click in this box, you can enter people's email addresses, and you can send the form to them that way. In a Google, when you create a Google Form, a spreadsheet is also created to house the results of that Google Form. To access that spreadsheet, you can click on View Responses. This will open up the spreadsheet that is linked to that Google Form and you will see all of your questions and once people start filling in the question, you will see their answers. To see what the form is going to look like to users, you'll click View Live Form. That will open up and show you what the form will look like to people who are going to fill it out. You'll also notice that you have an option to change the theme. With Google Forms, you can specify a theme that will give your form a little bit of color um, when your users fill it out. To go back to editing your questions, you'll click on Edit Questions. In your Google Drive, you will now see that you have the sample form in one file and the responses that go with that form in a separate spreadsheet. You want to open the responses, you would click on the spreadsheet, you want to edit the form, you would click on the form.